They do flight crew, FTC, flight team stand up. We got some so fresh, so clean, clean, educationalish, man. Hey, man, best substitute teacher, substitute reaction has been. Learn more than you learn a school under 30 minutes. Hey, man, 20 mythical creatures that were only seen once. This means that these creatures were so crazy, first of all, and then second, they were only seen one time, and they got the perfect description of what they looked like. Check it out. There are plenty of animals we see every day, like dogs, cats, birds, and sure. birds. But some are so yes, rarely that. seen that you describe them as mythical. And if you would, you wouldn't, I sure would. And no one really knows if some of them are real, to be honest. And some seem so strange that they shouldn't be real. Okay, I feel like I've seen that lizard before. From the Loch Ness I monster? It's crazy! No, 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 no. The crazy thing is, is that, like... I remember, like, I had, like, not, not that, like, a weird, like, thing for him, but, like, when I was, like, a, 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 like probably, like, 10 or 11, I had, I really, like, I don't know, lizards and stuff and dinosaurs, like, crazy and stuff. Bro, I seen this, I had to have seen this lizard one time. You know what I'm saying? I never seen it again, too. This is the craziest From thing. From the Loch Ness Monster to Kraken, here are 20 mythical creatures that were only seen once. All right. <laughs> Number 20. Number 20. Yeti. Yeti. The Yeti, which some people call the abominable snowman, is an ape-like creature that allegedly lives in Asia's Himalayan mountain range. Really? Many people have tried to gather evidence to suggest that the Yeti is real, but so far, we only really have anecdotal evidence. We've heard about visual sightings from people, video recordings that are sketchy at best, blurry photographs, and footprint plaster casts that could be any number of large animals. You know what I really think it is, like a Yeti, now thinking about it, I really think it's just like a gorilla, but just like, is able to like, lives in snow, or just a like like lost gorilla that's in snow, you know? Baked altogether. Some of the best alleged sightings have since been debunked, and we're actually no closer to knowing whether the Yeti is a mythical creature or the real deal. It's believed that the idea of the Yeti comes from Sherpa folklore and that someone misidentified a yak, bear, or other large creature somewhere along the line. The Yeti is described similarly to Bigfoot in North America, so the two are often closely compared. Some wow. people who say they've seen this mythical creature describe it as being large and bipedal with brown, gray, or white fur and long, sharp teeth. The frequency of supposed sightings started increasing around the 20th century when Westerners began scaling mountains. People reported seeing strange tracks of odd creatures, and it kicked off large-scale efforts of people heading out into the wilderness just to see if they could find the Yeti. We really? still haven't gotten any solid proof to say that it exists. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now, it's time for the star topic. Rumor has it that a priest in Romania has a more interesting Bro, story Bro, what to tell the heck others. is that? According to some Romanians, some people had been walking through a forest when two they encountered heads? this two-headed mythical creature. It appeared to be injured, and not knowing what to do, they called their priest, who always seemed to know how to solve problems. The priest arrived with a veterinarian to administer care to the creature, and it was allegedly never seen again. What do you think the creature was? It doesn't seem like anything from the What Kingdom. is that? Comment down below with the hashtag star topic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 19. 19. Loch Ness Monster. People don't really talk about the Loch Ness Monster in North America, but if you were to pay a visit this to Scotland and ask people what there is to do as a tourist, learning about this creature would be recommended more than once. The Loch Ness Monster, which locals call Nessie, is a Scottish folklore creature that allegedly inhabits the Loch Ness Freshwater Loch in the Scottish Highlands. It's described as a long-necked, large creature with at least one or more humps and a very secretive nature, since no one has ever been able to get a decent picture of something they're sure actually exists. The story of Loch Ness began in the 1930s when the Courier published information about an alleged sighting by someone called George Spicer. After his account was published, countless letters were sent to the newspaper detailing other sites of dragons, sea serpents, and Why didn't they just go dive fish. in the water and just see what it looks like? on the name Loch Ness Monster, and since the 1940s, it's been called Nessie. Although the earliest reports of the Loch Ness Monster date back much earlier to the 1930s. An abbot of Iona Abbey called Adamnon wrote an account in the 6th century AD talking about the Irish monk St. Columbia encountering 
locals burying a man by the River Ness. The man had been seen swimming in the river when he was attacked by a water beast that mauled him and dragged him under the water. Ever since then, there have been dozens of alleged sightings, but most of these supposed sightings have been proven to be other things, like bird wakes, a Greenland shark, a Welsh catfish, and even birds that have had their heads and necks mistaken for parts of the Loch Ness Monster. Number 18. Okay. Megalania. Oh, what? I thought there was, there's a Megalodon in the ocean. And then you have a Megalena? What, uh, this is the girl version of the... What? The monitor lizards we have today are terrifying enough, but can you believe that some used to exist that were even larger and scarier? Really? They are called Megalania, and they are a now extinct giant monitor lizard species Good. that used to live in Australia during the Pleistocene. Oh my gosh. Even today, they are considered the largest terrestrial lizard to have ever existed, with estimated lengths of up to 23 feet and weights of up to 4,277 pounds. That's massive. We don't know everything there is to know about Megalania, but we do know that yeah, the youngest What you doing? You see that come crawling at you, bro. years old, and it's thought that Australia's first indigenous settlers might have encountered them and might have even played a part in their extinction. Judging by their size, experts think they would have feasted on medium to large animals like giant marsupials, as well as birds, chicks, and eggs. They had heavy built bodies and legs, massive skulls, and jaws packed full of plain Oh, that van needs to get out of there. Based on their size and a few other factors, scientists also think they they might have been quite speedy, being able to sprint at speeds similar to freshwater crocs. Even more terrifying is that they might have been venomous. We know that the Komodo dragon and Nile monitor both have toxin-secreting oral glands, so the Megalania might have as well. A fast, large, powerful, and venomous lizard? No thanks. Number okay. 17. Wow. Super Cabra! What? The Chupacabra is one of those creatures that people say they've seen once, but no one knows. Wait, it's a dog? Descriptions of it can also vary depending on the country or place people believe they've seen it. It's a legendary creature in the America's folklore, and its name means goat sucker. It supposedly attacks livestock, particularly goats, and drinks their blood. Some people might What it. in the demon type of animal is that? What? S as reptilian-like, while others say it's more of an alien. Most people tend to agree on its features, though, saying that it's about the size of a small bear with spines from its neck running down to the base of its tail. Although a few people speculate that it's more dog-like than bear-like. Sightings of the Chupacabra have been reported since the 1970s, with people saying they've seen it in Maine all the way through to Chile, and even in other countries outside of the Americas like the Philippines and Russia. For many people, though, their belief in this creature's existence came from an event in 1975, when livestock killings were reported in the small Puerto Rican town of Mocha. Many farmers in the area said that their animals were being killed, and each one had been bled dry with small, circular incisions. However, in later years, forensic experts stated that street dogs were likely to blame for the mass killing of animals. Oh, Number sixteen, goodness, bro. I don't. I'm gonna so many new a yowie. The Americas have Bigfoot, and Scotland has the Loch Ness monster. But what does Australia have? The Yowie, of course. The Yowie is one of many names given to a creature in Aussie folklore that allegedly lives in the outback, particularly around eastern Australia. It's often described as a hairy, ape-like creature that stands at up to 12 feet tall, with feet much larger than ours. Bro, Although, why can't they just go play basketball, bro? 12 feet tall? The tracks supposedly left by Yowies are inconsistent in their number of toes and the shape of their feet. Some people who have supposedly seen a Yowie in person described it as aggressive and violent, while others say they're shy and timid. Sightings of this unusual creature actually date back quite a long time. There was mention of indigenous apes in the 1850s in the Australian Town and Country Journal. The earliest account was in 1876 when the Yowie was described as an unearthly animal or inhuman creature named the Yahoo Devil Devil or Hairy Man of the Wood. Six years later, an amateur naturalist said he had seen an indigenous ape between Oladulla and Batemans Bay on New South Wales' south coast. Even in more recent years, people claim to have seen Yowies. A Canberra man and said he saw a juvenile one with long arms and covered in hair in 2010, and a music videographer from Lismore claimed to have seen one north of Bexel in New South Wales in 2013. Number 15. Montauk Monster. 
The bro, bro months, what are the these animals, the bro? Seen once, and that's because no one knew what it was until it was finally identified as an ordinary animal. The Montauk monster was an unidentified animal that washed up in Montauk, New York in 2008 and was found by Jenna Hewitt and three friends at Ditch Plains Beach. People jokingly speculated that the unusual looking critter was a mutant experiment from the Plum Island Animal Disease Center, and others assumed that there was some kind of big cover-up and that the corpse had been taken away and hidden somewhere. Heck, bro. Initially, news articles ran with theories like a turtle without a shell, a dog, or a large rodent. A supposed expert from a university even deemed the creature to be fake. That last theory was the most unlikely. In the end, there were a few solid theories thrown around, like a coyote, a sheep, a sea turtle, or a rodent. Some people were also convinced that it was a raccoon. So what did it end up being? Well, the raccoon, apparently. According to paleozoologist Darren Nash, who was backed up by American biologist and wildlife conservationist Jeffrey Corwin, the corpse's dentition, front paws, and skull shape were from a raccoon, and its strange appearance was because it had been decomposing in the water. Number 14. Okay. Narwhal. Narwhal. Narwhals aren't mythical. They are real. But most of us will never see one in person, and they're pretty much the unicorns of the ocean. Narwhals are toothed whales, with the males having straight, long, spiral tusks coming out of their canine teeth. Bro, imagine... Side. Oh my gosh, bro. It's so sharp, bro. They grow it looks up to like... be about 18 feet long, weigh up to 3,530 pounds, Ugh. and don't have dorsal fins. They're also unique in other ways compared to other whales, such as not having fused vertebrae like most whales and dolphins. Instead, their vertebrae are joined, which is more commonly seen in most other mammals. Narwhals live around the Arctic waters of Canada, Russia, and Greenland, and they are a specialized Arctic predator. During the winter months, they feast on flatfish under pack ice, but will eat mostly Arctic cod during the summer months. We usually understand why creatures have unique features, but experts aren't yet entirely sure what their unicorn horn is for. It can grow up to about 10.2 feet long, and about 1 in 500 males have two rather than just one. Just 15% of females grow one, and theirs are usually much smaller. Some say they use it as a weapon for feeding, for breaking holes into sea ice to breathe, and as an acoustic organ. Others nah, say it's bro. a feature to make them more desirable to that the opposite sex. Dangerous. The general consensus is that it's most useful for this rather than feeding or catching food. Number 13. 13. Pogo Pogo. Oh, do Pogo. Pogo Pogo is a lake monster that looks very similar to the Loch Ness Monster of Scotland. It's entrenched in Canadian folklore and supposedly lives in Okanagan Lake in Canada's westernmost province, British Columbia. Is this true? Some have said that the idea of Ogo Pogo dates back to First Nationals folklore, but it's now a commercial symbol and a representation of the region. Most sources describe Ogo Pogo as a large, serpentine-like lake creature with dark, smooth skin, a 50-foot long body, and a diameter of thicker than a telephone pole. Supposedly, it also moves at fast speeds by propelling itself with its large tail and coiling its body vertically. The first detailed sighting of Ogopogo was in 1872 by Susan Allison. She was the first non-native person to live in the region. After Susan, there wasn't another detailed sighting until 1968, when someone called Art Folden noticed something moving in the lake while driving on Highway 97. He filmed what he said was Ogopogo moving in the water, producing a large wake. Based on later film analysis, it was later revealed that the creature was closer to the shore than it looked, which reduced its size and speed and made the creature more likely to be a real animal like an otter or a beaver. Number 12. Okay. Kraken. Okay, we just to be fair, familiar. We explored so very little of the ocean that a legendary sea monster like Kraken could actually be real, and we wouldn't even realize it. For now, though, it's apparently just something from folklore. The Kraken is described as a large man-killing octopus that lives around the coasts of Norway. It was that first described in 1700 that, by dude. Italian Catholic priest Francesco Negri, who traveled in Scandinavia. Then again, but in I do remember that uh, by missionary and explorer Hans Egge. Octopus the thing. best description of Kraken was by Norwegian bishop Eric Pontopadin, who said it was an octopus of tremendous size that could King pull Cole? down ships. And while Kraken has long been described as an octopus monster, it's very likely that what many people have seen throughout history is, in fact, a giant squid. After all, they can grow up to 50 feet long. Number 11. Number 11. Hust's Eagle. 
Frost. The Hust's eagle does seem a bit like a mythical creature, to be honest. They are an extinct eagle What's species different? from the South Island of New Zealand and frequently appear in Maori legend. Hust's eagles were the largest eagle to have ever existed at 33 pounds, which is a whole lot heavier than the harpy eagle, which weighs around 20 pounds. It's believed that they grew this big due to the size of their prey, such as the flightless moa, which could weigh about 510 pounds. This massive eagle went extinct around 1400 after the arrival of the Maori, since they heavily preyed on large, flightless birds. However, the early Maori might have also competed for the same food sources as the Hust's eagle, which wouldn't have helped their population numbers. And to be fair, most people wouldn't have enjoyed having Hust's eagles around today. Not only were they massive, but the way they took down their prey was violent. Because they had large beaks, they would rip out the internal organs of their prey, resulting in blood loss that led to death. Wow. They might have also fed on their victims similarly to vultures by plunging their heads into the body cavities of animals and feasting on their organs. And imagine if we had them today. No one's family pets would be safe. Number 10. Platypus. Plat who hasn't heard of a platypus? We all know that the platypus isn't a mythical creature, but honestly, it should be. It's like the Earth's creator had all these leftover parts for making other animals and was like, well, I might be able to create something just using these. They are egg-laying mammals, which is I'll, It's enough. crazy. Yeah, I can see myself having a pet platypus when I'm, like, older. I don't know why. They also have biofluorescent fur, a tail for storage, are they dangerous? With feet, and an elongated snout. They're just downright absurd. And if you were to explain such an animal to someone, they'd have a hard time believing it was real. Platypuses are also often referred to in different it's cultures. It's like a... Yo, a platypus is literally like a swimming duck. Some Aboriginal Australians used to think they were a duck and water rat hybrid. Other Aboriginal Australians use the platypus as a totem, and it holds special meaning for the Wadi Wadi people residing along the Murray River. Platypuses have even been used as mascots. Sid the platypus was a Sydney 2000 Olympics mascot, and Hexley the platypus is the mascot for the Darwin operating system. Number nine. Number nine. Saiga antelope. Saiga antelopes are strange creatures. Okay. I've heard of antelope, but not this type. type. They almost seem mythical. They are critically endangered antelopes that used to inhabit a huge area of the Eurasian steppe, but today there are only small numbers of them in Russia and Kazakhstan. To say they are in trouble is an understatement. There are only about 50,000 of them left. Saiga antelopes are about 32 inches tall at the shoulder, weigh up to about 152 pounds, and have a head and body length of about 55 inches. They differ from other antelope species by their noses which feature as bloated, downward-facing nostrils. They also have dark marks on their cheeks and nose and long four-and-a-half-inch ears. The male saigas have thick, wax-colored, and slightly translucent horns with up to 20 rings. These can grow up to about 15 inches. Okay. Most saigas live in large herds in open woodlands, grasslands, steppes, and semi-deserts, and eat a range of plants, including those that other animals can't eat because they're poisonous. Wow. Number 8. Lowland Streaked Tenrec. Huh? Lowland streak Tenrex are little critters from Madagascar. They Madagascar! They lowland rainforests and are most often found digging underground, hanging out on land, and even splashing around in the water. They are a true delight. These mythical-looking creatures are only around five and a half inches long, but some can grow up to nearly seven inches long. They only weigh a mere 9.9 .9 ounces at most. They may not be very big, but they stand out incredibly well, so they'd be easy to spot. They have black, spiny bodies mixed with yellow stripes, so they kind of look like spiky bumblebees. They are active during the day and night and mainly feast on earthworms. They manage to attract earthworms by stamping their feet on the ground to make it easier to forage them. They yep. also have long snouts, which they can poke into the ground to find food. As easy as it is for them to find food, these little fellas aren't really thriving. In fact, their populations are under threat due to continuous deforestation. Sometimes oh. lowland streak tenrec are also hunted for food. What? Number seven. Vogel Cop Superb Bird of Paradise. Bro, this bird is literally seven. An LED light bird, bro. Vogel Cop Superb. How the heck can you, bro? Say that five times without stuttering. Bird of Paradise. Come on. The Vogel Cop Superb Bird of Paradise, known as the Crescent Shaped La Farina or Curl Caped Bird of Paradise, is a bird endemic to Bird's Head Peninsula. They were once classed as a subspecies of the Superb Bird of Paradise. 
and were first described as recently as the 1930s by Ernst Meyer, a leading evolutionary biologist. It wasn't until 2018 that it was seen as a full species, a decision made based on their behavioral differences and their striking black plumage with feathers that absorb up to 99.95% of light. These birds can be found in the mountainous areas of Bird's Neck Peninsula in western New Guinea in Indonesia, and they are most wow. often spotted at heights of up to 6,561 feet. The family of birds they come from, Bird of Paradise, is incredibly unique. Most species are found in Australia, Indonesia, and Papua New Guinea, and there are about 44 species across 17 genera. Most are known for their incredible plumage, including long feathers extending from their beak, tail, head, or wings. Most Birds of Paradise species also live in dense rainforest environments, feasting on fruit and arthropods. Number six. Number six. Thorny Devil. Bro, I thought I said something thorny else. Thorny Devil, also known as Moloch Mountain. Whoa! Thorny Imagine lizards. stepping on that! Are lizards from Australia. They grow up to about 8.3 inches long, including their tail, and get their name from their appearance. It's like a These scorpion lizard. Have two lizard. large horned scales on their heads that make them look a bit like devils. They're also covered in spines that help protect them from predators. Although they also rely on deception and camouflage to protect them from threats, such as their false heads. Head. Yeah, this clever lizard has a spiny, false head on its neck. When it sees a predator, it'll tuck away its real head and show off the false one, which is made of soft tissue. Although, most predators aren't really interested in thorny devil lizards anyway. Their sharp spines make them too difficult to swallow. Take it from me. Thorny devils live in most parts of central Australia in Arab scrubland and desert environments. Wow. They feast on ants and collect moisture to hydrate themselves through their skin. Once the morning dew touches their skin, it's transported to their mouths. They're so absurd that it's hard to believe they're even real. Number five, frilled lizard. Okay, well, this is for everybody who's heard this. This one I was talking about. The frilled beginning. lizard would have to be near the top of the list. Also, that's like a baby dinosaur pterodactyl thing. Frilled lizard. They are a lizard species from northern Australia and southern New Guinea with a large. Now, nah, bro, them. these lizards definitely exist in Florida, bro. Their neck made from cartilage connected to their jawbone. Most of the time, this frill sits against their body, and they'll just spend their days lounging around in trees, eating small vertebrates and insects. However, when the lizards are frightened, they put it on display. Frilled lizards will open their mouths out wide to reveal the yellow or pink lining of the frills, which blends into orange and red scales. They'll also show off their beautiful frills during courtship, in fights over territory, and to discourage predators. Interestingly, the color of the frills can depend on where they live. Their frills will feature brown, red, and orange if they live in a clay-filled environment. Bro, it's just wrong with his mouth open. Green, gray, and brown if they live in a tropical region. Number four. Number four. Blue Sea Dragon. Blue Sea Dragon. Blue Sea Dragons, also called Glaucus Atlanticus Dragon Slug. It looks like a germ. Sea Swallow and many other names are tiny 1.2 inch long blue sea slugs living in temperate and tropical waters worldwide. They live for around a year and have flat tapered bodies with six branch like appendages. Blue Sea Dragons are also pelagic critters, which means they just float around in the water using the surface tension to stay upright and they'll be carried away to new locations based on the currents and winds. Blue sea dragons are blue and white, and that is not by accident. They make sure the blue side of their bodies face upright to blend in with the blue of the water, and the silvery gray-white side will face downward to blend in with the reflection of the sunlight on the ocean surface. Although, it's not like they need to camouflage themselves because they already have a pretty good defense strategy. Because they eat the venomous nematocysts from marine organisms like the Portuguese man-o-war, they can store the venom and deliver painful stings. Anyone stung by blue sea dragons Dragons might experience nausea, vomiting, pain, dermatitis, and a range of other uncomfortable symptoms. Don't get stung Number by those. Three. Mata Mata Turtle. Mata Mata Turtle! Out of all turtle species, the Mata Mata Turtle found in South America would have to be one of the most unusual. It's a freshwater turtle from the Amazon and Orinoco basins and was first described in 1741 as a large land turtle with spiky and ridged scales. They are large, sedentary turtles with unusually triangular and flattened heads, a horn on their tubular snout, and weird tubercles and flaps of skin. 
Mata Mata turtles also have four barbels on their upper jaw and three on their chin. None of these barbels have hooks or notches. They are also brown or black in color, measure up to 37 inches long, and can weigh as much as 46 pounds. There are really? certainly no lightweights. Most Mata Mata turtles live in stagnant pools, marshes, and slow-moving streams. While they are an aquatic species, they spend a lot of time in shallow water so that they can position their snouts above the water to breathe. These turtles are carnivorous and mostly eat invertebrates and fish. When they find something they like, they move it to shallow water, surround it, wave their front legs around to stop them from escaping, and then open their mouths to cause a rush of water that essentially scoops the fish into their mouths. Because of how unique these turtles are, they're pretty popular in the exotic pet trade market. Number two. Number two. Hardvar. Aardvark! Aardvarks are medium-sized nocturnal oh, animals looks like a nice Africa pet. with long, pig-like snouts, sharp claws, and powerful legs. They are known burrowers and spend a lot of time digging out burrows to live in and rear young. Aardvarks look a little bit like pigs, especially with their arched backs and It looks bodies, like a pig but bunny. But their back legs are longer than their forelegs. Their front feet have just four toes each, while five are on both of their rear legs. They also have unique shovel-like nails, which undoubtedly help them dig impressive burrows. These unique critters weigh up to 180 pounds and can grow as long as 4.27 feet, including their tails. They're How's about it seven in its eye? inches long. While they mostly have pale yellow and gray fur, they're more likely to look red and brown, and this is due to the amount of time they spend in the soil. It's likely that you'll smell an aardvark before you see one. Both sexes secrete a strong-smelling secretion from their anal glands. They use this scent to mark their territories. Whoa. If you're going to see or smell aardvarks anywhere, it'll be in sub-Saharan Africa around bushland, woodlands, savannas, and grasslands. Number Which one. is number one? Venezuelan Poodle Moth. Poodle Moth? The Venezuelan Poodle Moth is so absurd that you'd be forgiven for thinking it's some kind of mythical animal oh. that someone's made up. In fact, we didn't even know they really existed until around 2009. They are an unidentified moth that gets their name by looking like a cross between a poodle and a moth. They're kind of cute but terrifying at the same time and have what looks like white fluffy fur all over their bodies. We came to learn about these moths when zoologist Arthur Anker from the Federal University of Sierra in Brazil posted a picture of them on his Flickr page. He saw the tiny insect with its one inch wingspan while walking through the Canaima National Park in Venezuela. After asking for help identifying its genus, most experts came up with a whole bunch of question marks. But some think it might be related to the furry muslin moth. Just when you think we've discovered the majority of the most exciting and unique animals in the world, we go and discover one as absurd as the Venezuelan poodle moth. Experts say that we're finding thousands of new insects every year in South American rainforests, and the Venezuelan poodle moth is just one of them. We've got so many weird and wonderful animals Bro, here on Earth. I learned so about so much new animals here. I know that some of these creatures are real, but who's to not say even gonna lie to those... you, bro. I learned about so much new animals, yo. You told you, man. You learn more over me, over with you, man. It's true.